A fortnight ago, I did a video on saving money on public charging. Due to an unfortunate change in the way the YouTube algorithm works at the moment, not a lot of people got to see that. However, even if you did, you might still be interested in this video. Today I'm going to demonstrate one of the methods in action, and we'll get a decent understanding of just how much of a difference a simple choice can make. How much money can we save on public charging in the real world? While out and about on my travels last week, I happened to stop at Reading Services on the westbound side of the M4. I'd forgotten just how big a charging site this is now. It's a great place to stop for a top-up if you are in need of a charge in this area. The majority of the chargers on this site are in an extension to the car park that they tacked onto the far end, so we drive the length of the boundary road to get to the bit we need. When we arrive here, we have a choice. A plethora of chargers to our left and our right. On the left are all of the grid serve chargers, a big long line of them, just waiting for your business. We could use those, no problem. However, this is one of the sites at which grid serve have raised their prices, so we will pay a pretty penny for the privilege of doing so. 85 pence per kilowatt hour for contactless. We can get a discount by using the GridServe app, bringing the price down by 6 pence per kilowatt hour to 79 pence, their old rate. That's not too bad a saving. 6 pence per kilowatt hour isn't to be sniffed at. However, we do have another option. Let's rewind and take that decision again. If we turn right into the Tesla superchargers, which are open to everyone at this site, then we can save more than just six pence per kilowatt hour. A lot more. Tesla's prices vary by time of day and by site, but at this site, at peak time, we'd pay only 51 pence per kilowatt hour, 34 pence per kilowatt hour less than on grid serve. And that's with contactless, with no app registration, no sign-ups, no membership. That's available to everyone. Tap and go. A 40% saving for turning right instead of left. That's got to be tempting, hasn't it? The process to use this charger, it was almost exactly the same as using a grid serve charger. We plug in as normal. We present our contactless card, either a debit or credit card, exactly like in a shop and the charging starts a few seconds later, often a little bit faster than it does on a grid serve charger, as it happens. We're off to the races, charging our car very quickly. We're filling at the speed of a DC rapid charger for pretty much the price of a slow AC charge point. Very nice. There is one trick we need to know in order for this to be a simple experience. That's how to stop the charge. The one thing a Tesla supercharger of this type doesn't offer is the ability to stop the charge from the charger. Instead, we have to stop it from the car. In my Renault Zoe, I do that by pressing the button used to release the charge flap. One quick button press and the charger stops, and we can unplug and be on our way. Not too difficult. How you stop the charge on your car might vary a bit from mine. This is something that varies by make and model, but as long as you know how to do that, you can save a bunch of money. How to stop the charge in your car is something I recommend you get to know whether or not you intend to use a supercharger. It's always possible that a charger by another network will crash and you'll want to use this trick to end the session with it. In some cars, there is a button next to the charge point that is used to stop the charge. Sometimes it's done through the touchscreen inside the car. And like the Zoe, there may be others with a dedicated button on the dash. But that's usually easy enough to find on an online forum for owners of your car. There's quite a saving to be made for knowing this one fact about your car at Tesla Superchargers. Remember, this is 34 pence per kilowatt hour cheaper than the grid serve chargers opposite. If I put 35 kilowatt hours of energy into my car, enough to take me from about 10% to 80% on my Zoe, then it would cost £29.75 to charge at GridServe. 
but only £17.85 to charge on the superchargers at the exact same site, a saving of £11.90. For that saving, all you have to do is know two bits of information. How to stop the charge in your car, and which Tesla superchargers are public. Well, the second bit is fairly easy. First, if they look like this, with the solid body, then they are probably public. But to be sure, just check ZapMap or another mapping app of your choice. They pretty much all make it clear. Indeed, on some of them, you can filter out the Tesla-only superchargers so that they don't even show on the map unless they are public. So it's pretty easy to know which is which. For completeness, there is one small caveat. There's just one set of people for whom this might not be the best advice. That's people with cars that use an 800 volt architecture. Don't worry, I know that sounds complicated, but there aren't many of those, so I can list them. If you own a Kia EV6 or EV9, a Hyundai Ioniq 5, 6 or 9, a Genesis GV60, GV70 or G80, a Porsche Taycan or Macan Electric, an Audi e-tron GT, or the A6, S6 or Q6 e-trons, BYD Seal, Sea Lion or Tang, Xpeng G9, and in the States also the Hummer EV, the Tesla Cybertruck and the Lucid Air. Those are all 800 volt cars. Those cars will still charge on a Tesla supercharger, but they will do so quite slowly. So you might prefer to spend the extra money to get the extra speed. But if you don't need that speed advantage, even you can use superchargers. In the States, they've got themselves in a mess with connectors and you need an adapter to use a Tesla supercharger at the moment. But in the UK and Europe, we mandated the connector to be used a long time ago. So no adapter is required over here. Now, some of you might want to shout at me for suggesting you associate yourself with Tesla. And I can understand that. Elon Musk isn't someone we all want to be associated with. That salute was weird, wasn't it? But I would point out that Tesla and Elon are not one and the same. And as it happens, Elon doesn't profit from you using a supercharger. Due to some legal shenanigans, Elon's pay packet was rescinded by a US judge, and he hasn't been paid at all for his work at Tesla since 2018. Not a dime. That continues to be the case. So actually, not only are you not lining his pockets by using the Tesla network, you're kind of sticking it to him. I do understand why people might not agree, but for me, I try to separate the politics from my finances. Saving nearly £12 for a big charging session, or more if charging outside of peak times, is something I simply can't afford to ignore. Remember, this is just one example of how you might be able to save money. As I mentioned earlier, YouTube's algorithm has changed recently and not many people got to see my other video on money saving tips for public charging, some of which bring even bigger savings than this particular hack. In case you want to see those other tips and tricks and how much they can save you, I'll link to that video from the end screen of this one and also from the description. Okay, that's more or less it, I think. That's all there is to know about Moto Reading M4 Westbound and this topic in general. You can save a lot of money by changing network. Start simple if you want to. Practice ending a charging session from the car when using the network with which you are currently familiar, and then you are all ready to benefit from the savings from using a cheaper network when the opportunity arises. There are some big savings to be made when using a cheaper network, even bigger than in this example when charging outside of peak hours, for example. And don't worry, Elon doesn't profit from it, even if the alternative network you use is Tesla's. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments on this subject are most welcome in the comments section. I'd like to hear your experiences in the comments. Have you tried charging at Tesla superchargers recently? If so, how did you get on? If you've liked the video, then it is a big help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And I'd love to have you as a subscriber of the channel if you want to see more from me. Thanks.